American Animal is based on a true story that tells the tale of four former thieves who recount their past thefts. When they were young, they had stolen a rare book from their university library, which was worth millions of dollars, even though they had no experience in stealing. A man is putting on some makeup to disguise himself as someone else, and in another place, some parents are sharing the grief they are experiencing because of what their children have done, and in another place, there are four men ready to commit a robbery. A young man named Spencer was interviewing for admission to college. Spencer was known as someone who was good at painting, and his life was spent painting canvases with stunning results. His skill in painting is what got Spencer accepted into the university. However, while in college Spencer was often bullied by his classmates. But things weren't so bad, because Spencer had a friend named Warren. Spencer and Warren once stole a sausage at a fast food restaurant. In this movie, both Spencer and Warren, who is 30 years old, are the narrators throughout the movie. One day, Spencer visited an art museum with his lecturers and other students. In the museum, there was one piece of art that fascinated him and he paused to look at it. The painting depicted a flamingo in a river. Not only that, Spencer discovered the fact that the painting had a sale value of $12 million. Shortly after, Spencer met Warren again, they talked and came up with the idea to steal the artwork. Warren realized that it would take a lot of effort to pull off the ice. As Spencer said that Warren was someone who would go all out if he wanted something. The scene then switches to show Warren who starts looking for ways to commit a theft, by googling it. After finding some information, Warren goes straight to Spencer at his part-time job at a supermarket. Warren tells Spencer that they need a blueprint of the library to know the way in and the way out of the library. Spencer casually responded that if they needed blueprints then he would draw the manual blueprints of the library. Warren then went to his friend to get information about a rare item dealer. Warren and Spencer had zero experience in theft. Warren then managed to get an email from someone, and the person asked him not to send a message to him with the same email address. After successfully communicating with the dealer, they both went to New York with the agreement that they would give $500 just to get more information about the dealer. When they arrived in New York, they both enjoyed a night out there. The next day, the timeline shows February 14th, 2004 at a street corner. Warren gave his money to one of the men in the street. There are two different versions between Warren and Spencer in this case. Spencer said he saw Warren meet a young man but Warren said he met an old man. Later from the meeting, Warren got a new contact, a man in the Netherlands. Since he was already halfway there, Warren finally decided to go to the Netherlands by himself. In the Netherlands, Warren was on his own to meet the real dealers. With no experience at all, Warren tried to be professional in order to work with the dealer. They asked Warren to be able to provide authentic evidence of the goods, as well as provide him with an email. Once he was back in Kentucky, Warren met Spencer and told him about his meeting with the Dutch dealer. Both of them went back to plan the heist, and they realized that two people were not enough to carry out their plan, so they planned to bring one more friend, Eric. In the class, Warren gave a paper to Eric saying that he needed to talk to him and after class was over. Without further ado, Warren immediately explained his plan to Eric, and it turned out that Eric thoughtlessly accepted his invitation. They then invited Eric to see the library they were going to steal. Eric then gave some of his opinions about Spencer and Warren's plan which turned out to be less than perfect and there were still many things to be improved, including changing the theft schedule. Eric changed the theft schedule to the daytime. The next day in the Chancellor's office, as an athlete scholarship student, Warren had a poor track record in the classroom and he also almost failed to make it into the lineup for the match. He was reprimanded by the Chancellor and asked to improve himself. As we know, Warren is currently focusing on the theft plan, so he is less focused on the world of study. The story continues to Spencer, Warren and Eric who are gathered to continue making plans. The three of them plan to enter the room where the painting book is located. There was only one guard in the room, and she was a middle-aged woman. However, they realized that they needed a driver to move their stolen goods. Warren then had an idea to invite his high school friend Chaz. Chaz was a student who came from a fairly wealthy family, but was a bit of a barbarian. He is also known as a busy student who enjoys sports. Chaz then managed to join them without much effort. The four of them were finally at their base to talk about what they were going to do. Warren then gave each of them a nickname, based on color. Warren's nickname is Mr. Yellow, Eric is Mr. Black, Spencer is Mr. Green and Chaz is Mr. Pink. 
Not only that, they will disguise themselves as old men to enter the library and carry out the mission. Warren then gave tasks to each of them. Spencer is in charge of buying old grandpa makeup, Eric is in charge of buying fake identity cards, Chaz is in charge of practicing and finding the fastest route to escape and Warren will be in charge of finding authentic evidence of the items they will steal, so that the collectors would want to buy the stolen goods. Warren has also determined the timing of the theft, when final semester exams are over, on the basis that when the semester exams are over, the students rarely visit the library. Then the four of them agreed to choose Warren who would be the most crucial person in this mission, as he would be dealing with the librarians. The day of the heist finally arrived. The timeline showed that the heist took place on December 16, 2004. When they checked the items they needed for their mission, it turned out that Warren had forgotten to buy a taser, so he had to buy one first. Eric then took his car and managed to replace his van's license plate with someone else's. The scene then shows us how they dress each other up as the old man. Once everyone had gathered, they finally arrived at the library. It was painted on their faces that they were all anxious, because this was their first theft mission. Warren reminded everyone to act as an old man, so that people would not be suspicious. Then the four of them divided the task of paying attention to each other in the library, and when Chaz was about to catch up with Warren, sadly Warren found that a meeting was being held in the room. The four of them deliberated whether to wait or withdraw from their heist mission. Spencer immediately chose to leave because things had started to go wrong. Then in the car, Warren expressed his frustration because the plan that had been made had failed miserably, but when he entered the inconvenience store, Warren had the idea to call the library. Following the call, Warren was informed that tomorrow, the librarians had an empty schedule and Warren intended to have a meeting with them. The scene then switches to Spencer's house, as he is hesitant to continue with his plan. Spencer then goes to Warren to tell him that he's backing out, as he doesn't want his family to be affected by his behavior. However, with his words, Warren managed to persuade him to continue with the mission. The four of them finally met again to decide who would face off against the librarian, and it was Eric and Warren who would step up. Chaz was on standby duty in the car and Spencer would stay outside to keep an eye on the surroundings. The day of the robbery finally arrived again. Unlike their previous plan, this time they decided not to disguise themselves as other people. So, Warren, dressed neatly, went straight into the library with Eric. Eric was in charge of staying downstairs and Warren would enter by himself into a special room, claiming that he was a man named Beckman, a man whose family had been guarding the painting book for generations. As the female librarian explains the painting book, Warren tries to find an opportunity to immobilize the old lady, then Eric gets a call from Warren as a sign that everything is safe. However, when he got upstairs, Eric saw that Warren had not paralyzed the librarian. Then they both tried to find the key to the glass cabinet, where the painting book was placed. It turned out that the key was with the librarian's lady. After managing to get a huge painting book, Warren also took another rare book. Warren and Eric then headed to an elevator that led to the basement, but when they were in the basement they didn't get an exit, so they both decided to use the regular route. They were spotted by other library visitors, before finally heading to the emergency stairs. Not wanting to be caught, with great worry and panic, Eric then told Warren to just let go of the huge painting book and then escape from the library. When they arrived at Chaz's car, they were all panicked, even Chaz was also driving his car in panic. Warren vomited because he was so panicked. After the incident, they all went about their respective lives while waiting to see how they could get their stolen goods to a collector. On the other hand, the media reported on the disappearance of two very rare books that had been stolen. Then the four of them headed to the dealer's place, but they didn't manage to meet the dealer's boss and only met his secretary. The secretary then asked for their phone numbers, and Spencer gave his to the secretary. Afterwards, Chaz asked how their meeting with the dealer had gone. When Chaz found out that Spencer had given his phone number to the secretary, he panicked, as Spencer's ringtone was an introduction of himself with his full name, and that would result in their actions being discovered by the authorities. Not only that, but Warren also revealed that he had emailed one of the collectors twice, which made Chaz even angrier, as they would soon be caught by the police. The atmosphere then became very heated as Chaz blamed Warren for ruining his life, while pointing a gun at him. The scene then switches to show the four of them, who eventually return to their respective homes and move on with their lives. Sometime later, Spencer received a sign that he might be wanted by the police. The four of them were worried that they would be arrested by the police and it turned out that their hunch was right. The police and FBI began to arrest them one by one. 
At the end of the movie, we are shown how the people involved in this heist are very sad when explaining what has happened to them. The interesting thing is, when the old Spencer explains that what has been told by Warren does not seem to be all real and the end of the movie shows us the situation after the theft occurred. All the stolen books have been returned by Eric, who then works as a painter, Chaz becomes a sports instructor and writes a book on how to exercise in prison, while Warren stays in Philadelphia re-enrolling in college and studying filmmaking, while Spencer continues his life as a painter who specializes in painting birds.